my faith, my culture, and the Nigerian politics. Faith, culture, and politics are inextricably linked. Karl Marx, a popular scholar, elucidated the relationship between the superstructure and the economic structural base in his model of society. He had defined the base as the way society produces what is needed to survive. Marx maintained that substructure determines superstructure. But the innuendo of Marx's postulation revealed that faith, culture, culture and politics are vehicles of exploitation. In the last 200 years, Christianity, Islam, and chauvinism were doctrines that govern and direct the affairs of men. These doctrines created beliefs that have promoted belligerent faiths and nationalism known today as fundamentalism and parochialism. Against cosmopolitanism, the culture of impunity embedded in capitalism and religious jingoism has destroyed the communalism culture that African societies were known for. It is pertinent to say that religion was used as an instrument of subjugation and economic slavery, slash colonialization, colonialism, to subdue Africans who were known to be warriors, communal and traditionalists, wielding supernatural powers. These are our forefathers. This is not to demonize any religious faith, but our realities were the balkanization of our geographical positioning and position of our communal life, to the placement of our culture and beliefs with borrowed faith as introduced a societal opium that is known today as dying and smiling, which is like sweat is invisible in the rain, a popular phrase coined by Professor Tony Fadula. As a result of this, the culture of accountability, prohibity, engagement, and confrontation that African people were known for have been relegated to the background because of phrases like biblical injunction of Romans 13 verse 1 that says, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. Religion has so polluted our culture and political responsibility to a point it has led to political apathy, as well as many ambiguous and esoteric doctrines that are giving room to government agents to throw those back and forth with policies and actions that has impoverished us the more. Why phrases like touch no man, anointed, or a child of God does not fight? We forgot that even religion was taken out over the world through war. How come we expect our freedom to be achieved through peace? Today, our worship centers deemed sacred have been turned to campaign grounds for politicians that are willing to support the work of God. Below are questions playing in my head. I'm hoping I will find some comfort in the minds of my co discussants during the debate. What stops us from having a Nigerian version of English like pidgin that everyone can understand? Either they went to regular school or not, respect of the tribe. Why are we afraid to discuss the divisibility or indivisibility of Nigeria as of today? What is the priority of Nigeria as a nation? What is our, what religion or cultural beliefs, you know? And are they not scams, you know? Uh, how did we lose history so fast? And why did we allow our religious and political elites realize our history? In closing, I believe in the superiority of rational thoughts over emotions, as well as the ability of technology and science in solving human problems. But our culture and tradition must be brought to bear in resetting our national priorities. Neither should our freedom be a subject of emotion. Uh, that's it. Great um, uh, paper put in by um, Samson, and I think it's very intelligent. I think one of the core problems we've always had is that I think when the Europeans came into Africa, they used religion as a weapon. And what's most funny is that they got religion and education from Africa, but they weaponized it and used it against us. And it's very, very funny to even note that women used to be highly respected in Africa. We had the Queen Aminas. We had people close to the Oni of Ife, women that were very strong and worked with the Oni closely. So we've always respected gender in Africa, though we were thought to think that we do not understand it. For me, Nigeria must create its own identity and forge forward, thinking properly 
and redirecting based on our own principle. I'm one of those that's a proponent of saying well, we must end payments for pilgrimages if we're not paying across for everybody plus if our worshippers and co because we're a secular state, not a bi-religious state. Second, Pigeon can unify Nigeria. Exactly. We need an identity. Exactly. Thank you. Everyone. You know, I was going to wait. Uh, I actually mapped that out about um, about language, basically unification of the country uh, by language. Because I know, like for instance, a country like Rwanda, where they have only one language that is very, very pre uh, predominant, the Kenya Rwanda language. So even where you come, you don't. There is nothing that divides people. You just get to identify people based on only one thing. So there is nothing like you are Yoruba. And, and you know, when, when we actually identify people based on a particular device, psychologically, it shapes how we begin to deal with them from that very minute. So, so this person says, I'm, 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 I'm from I'm from a boy in state. This person says, I'm from Lagos state. Even if you don't know, unconsciously, you just find yourself relating to this person in a particular way and another person in a particular way. I really think that the, the, the pidgin language, if it is actually, of course, again, it's the actionable part that is actually the problem, but then it's a very, very vital point that you mentioned. And then the touch note, my anointed part, it was very, very funny. I know everybody was, even uh, uh, Mr. Macaroni was like, ah, touch <laughs> note, my anointed. <laughs> no, yeah, it's true because um, that's, that's the, the fear. That's how they have been able to to um, silence people and check those of us that would rather have um, different opinions. Mm -hmm. When you say that someone, uh, when you use that uh, uh, phrase and you say touching on my anointed, that means you cannot question mm -hmm. the person, you cannot um, give um, opinions that are contrary yeah. to what the person is saying. Mm -hmm. So he puts that person in a position of whatever the person does goes. Yeah. And we need to call I know that. that has been a problem because yeah. at some point we no longer question certain things, even if they are against exactly. our personal conviction and opinion because it's coming from this. So, of course, Mr. Macaroni, <laughs> I would always say, touch by account number. <laughs> <laughs> but every time, every time the state has um, been in love with religion or religion has been interfaced with the state, yeah. what has happened has always been the crusades or something disastrous. Re you know, it's unifying state power with religious power. Mm. It's one of the most dangerous things that can ever happen. Okay. For me, if we are to move Nigeria forward, first divorce that. Another thing that can save Nigeria, I've always been a proponent, end state of origin, state of residence. Exactly. If we start state of residence, a chica can come from Kano. A Musa can come from like Lagos. Exactly. A, a Shegun can come from Enugu. Mm. And once that happens, they can also take political positions. It will diversify Nigeria. That's mm. what America uses yeah. as its strength. Yeah. Yeah. Hillary Clinton was not yeah. born in New York, but she became a senator in New York because mm. yeah. she's lived there most of her life. So I think we, uh, being honest, we must learn to use our culture to whatever strength mm -hmm. we can so mm -hmm. that we can develop this country. There's nothing like Nigeria. More than 250 ethnic groups in one territorial boundary. But what we don't have is we have not created an ideology, uh, which yeah. is what drives the yeah. nation. I, I agree with you, Mr. Macroni. You want to say something on that? Yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty much like what I, what, I, what I said earlier. Religion for me is, is if, if, if not the most powerful um, weapon, or should I say tool? Yeah. You see, the hold that religious leaders have on their followers is very strong. Mm. You find people that cannot even, um, you find people engage with their religious leaders mm. rather than people around them. Mm. If something happens to someone, you'll be shocked that some people, they won't talk to their husbands, yeah. they won't talk to their wives, exactly. they will go to their pastor. Mm. And when, they are, when the um, religious leader says, this is what you should do, the person will they do, get it. To do it. So imagine, imagine that type of platform mm. and then a political person, a governor, a whatever it is, comes to that setting and the religious leader is raising the hand of that person up and saying, this is the person that God has shown to me mm. that will move this. Even though he is not the will of the people. What do you so expect? So now use religion and impose politics you know on the people. Shocking? A particular church. I have doctors that attend that church. 
when I saw the doctor's position on COVID, I was hurt. Mm -hmm. These are trained medical doctors, mm -hmm. but they allowed religion to form a film of ink, oh, yes. ignorance. Yes. And it, it's, it's bad. You know, most people will say, ah, you're trying to stop God's work. I don't think it was God's intention to turn man into a robot. Mm -hmm. Because if he wanted to do that, he would have just kept all of us in one place and be giving others. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, he, he's giving us free will. And he, he said the, the, one, the difference between man and other animals is that he has given us free will. I don't think religion on any parameter, be it in northern Nigeria or, or in southern Nigeria, should be a parameter to judge how man lives or man works. We've seen, we've seen Arabian countries take themselves to the next level. Yes. And that is because yes. they've opened their borders yes. beyond religious extremism. And the truth is, as much as Nigerians will say it's what we call one religion extremist, mm. Mm. I believe another religion, an extremist, is just that they wear suits while being extremists. Yeah. Mm. And another thing is that what also baffled me is that you know, all the people that are, the politics, the people in the politics sphere, uh, space as, 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 as we find, as, as it were, are also all encapsulated inside this religious stuff. And so when you now begin to also look at how effective politics is working, you are now wondering what exactly are they learning from the religious space? Because most of all these politicians belong to one or two uh, religious settings again. Of course, now is it is for the is the <laughs> grassroots people. <laughs> How do you call it? Now the poor man they carry on for. <laughs> you know, you know, no, truthfully, cool because they, they use them. Those one, those ones, you know, because they are less privileged. Mm. They would whatever you say, they would accept. But these people from this religion, that religion, in their corners, they are all friends. They are all friends. They are all exactly. friends, and they That's are playing on the yeah, yeah. Let me be honest. Politicians have found out one thing, and this is a hard thing to say, but it's the truth. Politicians have found out one thing. If, if they delivered governance, nobody would go to church. Mm. I'm sure the church is even in on this. Because if governance were fine, nobody would go to church or mosque. Yes. Because uh, most yes. of the people go to church or mosque for financial gain, for promotion, or for visa or something. They want advancement. Things are not working, they, so they need they a they miracle. Need, the moment those so-called miracles are, are present, yeah. You will find out the number they of the anointing yes. to be touched. They need the anointing we to be touched. Saying it, we were saying it before. Um, I, I went to a state just last week, and for every bus stop, I see a, a signpost. So, so state is in the hands of God. Ah. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand what that means. So the other this states is are in the, the legs of God. Of God. So <laughs> that means what that thing is just doing is um, the, the, the government in that state is saying that. Anything that happens, it's not in my hand. You know, a friend who, asked me that who, question uh, two days ago about a particular state where there is problem, and he's now like, does it mean that this state is also in the hands of God at this point? Basically, I think if you look at it, uh, religious leaders have more to do um, on this particular topic. Um, so after the break, we're going to take a quick break now, and after the break, I'll be talking about how um, our humanity you know, as a people, is being politicized. Stay with us.